again. I just get a start on it. I didn't push very hard. And I'll show you the way that I really smooth that out later with, with uh, paint my hand sand. Okay? So it doesn't take much to start that foam. Right, you just but you just be very gentle in there, and as you do more of them, you find you push harder at first, take out a lot, and then clean it up. But you want to move it back and forth, and again, at the end of that sweep, as it goes up and down, you end up with a nub there. And if you're very gentle, you can even eliminate that if you're very gentle with this. Okay, but you have the idea on that, right? Mm -hmm. And then finally, we went around this off here, and you can do that either using a spindle sander or the belt sander. We'll just use the belt sander. Okay, So I just kind of went along, and, and my wife is a good, um, good judge of she, she paints some, and uh, she's a good judge of things like that. So I'll say, what do you think? You know, a little more, a little less. Yeah. And I tell you, the fellow in here named Alec, Alec Paul. You you can ask him anything like that, and he will give you a good. Or Bill over there, you know, they are they are truly great, and they will tell you. Oh, I think a little more would look better, a little bit less. But you you'll find what you want to do. But Alec particularly, they both do birds a lot. Yeah, not this kind of bird, but Ducks. realistic bird. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have that. Let me see, where are we going from there? Okay, once you have it um, to where you want it, all this smoothed out, the, the body completely, and you're that th it's going to look like this, but a little bit rougher, right? The only thing you haven't done yet is um, rounded off this it. beak. See how it's blocky, it's square? Works that look like that, it doesn't feel any good there. So again, what we're going to do is use the spindle sander. We're just going to rotate it back and forth on here to round the beak off. And uh, here, we can also round the head, but I, I typically use that belt sander and I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to do one here real quick. Because as you're working like this, it's easy to get carried away. But I do it by hand. Okay, next I'm going to move to this machine right here. And what we have is a head that's, well, it looks like a little bit like a blue jay, maybe, in some ways. <laughs> that really more, uh, what else? Maybe, yeah. There's birds that have really blocky heads. but uh, Have you ever tried a cardinal? For this? No. Now, there's plenty of people in there that have carved no, but I mean original cardinals, but I have not. Okay. It'd be fun to do. What I'm going to do is round this off, and again, I'm going to use a start by taking off these edges. I try to kind of 45 them and then round it. And 
the this profile is fairly good and because I haven't done the rest of this it's hard uh, and I'll use that mahogany one in a second to show you how it comes out but I just want to demonstrate taking it off I use the one 180 grit instead of the 60 because I want to slow it down you can almost take off half the head if you're not careful with this. there you go of the head is coming out and I can see very very much that it needs a deeper neck and of course I never did this one deep enough yeah deep. you're working right here right yeah so you take that off and of course I would work on around use this edge up here move away from that steel backing come up here a little bit move in there but I would definitely need to go back to the spindle sander and make that neck a good at least eighth of an inch deeper all the way around, all the way around. But you, know, you get you have the idea of how that, that comes together. Is sanding dowels and satin sanding sticks. At home a lot I have a vise, a very small, let's say, wood carving and painting vise, but you can also just hold it in your hand. I do that just because, as you say, I do have some hand issues, but don't we all, uh, you know, once you get past a certain age, you made this? You just make this. You just glue, okay. make your own mm -hmm. out of, this is half inch dowel. You just, this is 60 grit. You can see I label them because after you work them a while, you go, eh, what is that? And I also do it with 100 <laughs> and with 150, okay, for this. And you're just going to want to start working this. And that neck still isn't quite deep enough, but I would just sit there and, and work it down with the 60 grit, and yeah, you're gonna leave some serious grooves in there. Let me get this. And if you, you've done a lot of wood finishing, so you know that's gonna, you don't wanna just finish like this. That but it'll come off. But as you work finer grits, right. that's gonna come out, but you wanna be taken out of the material. <clears throat> so you are taking it in right here. Yeah. Okay. I want to dig that out. So it has more around. definition to the head. And the same thing, just keep it moving. And particularly like here, I need to take more out here, right here, to have that head emerge a little more. You may like it like this, mm -hmm. but I don't. Okay? And you can work around here, like see how lopsided that is? <laughs> yeah. It's big stuff. <laughs> sort of like my nose. <laughs> I fought 17 fights in a ring, so. My it. nose uh, was rearranged for me a lot of times. Uh, but so you can just gently take that off. And I usually use a finer one than this to work fine pieces, fine areas like that. But you know, you've done a lot of finishing woodwork. You know, uh, but, but in the back of the head here definitely needs, I like a little more definition. Uh, in the original Frank Faust design, as you'll see on his profile, which I'll give you a copy of, he likes a very distinct, almost sharp edge back here for where the bird comes mm -hmm. down. I think, though, that when a person's holding it, it should be a smooth curve. You do it the way you like. But again, I work with this, switch over to the 100, and then the 150. It, it pays to work a lot with 150 to take out and then start working with the grain instead of just 90 degrees. Work with the grain to take the, 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 uh, the deep lines out. Okay, same thing. Uh, back here, now you, you can use this here, but you there, that's better for a sanding stick. But in this area right here, again, with a 100 or 150, work in here, really smooth it out. And you can take the 60 grit. This is where the vise helps, but I'm going to come around here so you can see it. I get back in here, 
And of course, I have a nice bench at home and just work in here. Smooth it all in. Smooth it in. in. And it doesn't take much work. And then, of course, you just take a piece with your hand with 60 grit and work yeah. in here. Because your finger, even with my numb fingers, I can still work in there. Uh, work this up like this. Right? But in there, it's helpful just to use a piece with your hand. Coming back to sanding stick. Again, 60 grit. As you can see, I've used this one a fair amount. Start working it, and you can see, even we, although I tried to do it smoothly on the belt and everything, there are there are lumps, there are flats. We want to work those out if we're going to have a good finish. You can see, again, well, this is his belly is a little flat. It's one of the earliest ones I made, but uh, you try to make it as smooth as you can as round as you can. Uh, you can see the shape on that body is very different from this one which I did later, which I think is a better shape. <coughs> this one feels more like a bird looks. Yeah. Again, the head's smaller on this one, which I prefer. Mm -hmm. The body is... So it, but, you know, people still like this one. That's, that's my yeah. wife. She adores that one. But uh, when oh. I said it, she said, can I have them? Do you make them for smaller hands, too? You can. Okay. I have done. Okay, so you work this along. And you can see with the flat, and by, by working with it in your hand and just moving your hand on the curve, you take out the flats, you take out the ridges, you work in different directions. I prefer to work with the grain, just like you all know why. Uh, but just work it all over. And I have that little vice. I can actually get both hands on this and work it like almost like a rasp. You all have used a wood rasp. You work it like that. And you can take off a lot of wood very quickly. Like, I will frequently end up with a bigger lump on one side than the other. <laughs> Y'all will probably do it better than me, but I end, typically end up with one side of the belly or the back portion too big. Yep, this one, maybe it's just the way the grain looks, but it looks like it's Little smaller here than there, which is they fine. They will be. It, yeah. yeah. They it's will be. Fine. So I work it with that, work it down, then I end up, I just use regular old sandpaper and I take it all the way down to 320 and I hold it in my hand, and I'll also use these foam blocks, which I think I got from Clinkspore. You can get them at Ace, you can get them at yeah. um, any place, any, anywhere. Yeah. Lowest has them. And they Lowest. are really, really good Lowest. for working yeah. a com complex curved surface or compound or whatever, however yeah. you say it. They're really good for that. You just work it all over. And you can see just coming here, the mahogany is a little softer than the cherry or the mahogany is pretty easy to work with. And uh, so eventually that's going to come down. But you want to finish off, I take them down to 320. Okay. How to finish it, what sort of finish to put on it. If you all done a lot of work where you have your own preferred finishes. But what I use is a sanding sealer. I use the Zinzer sanding sealer because it's a waxless shellac. I like that. Put on a coat, sand it 150, 220. Another coat, sand it 220, 3, 320. And then I go to polyurethane and do two coats of polyurethane sanding between the, which is the third coat. Coming back to sanding stick. Again, 60 grit. As you can see, I've used this one a fair amount. Start working it, and you can see, even with, although I tried to do it smoothly on the belt and everything, there are, there are lumps, there are flats. We want to work those out. We're going to have a good finish. You can see, again, this is, his belly is a little flat. It's one of the earliest ones I made. But 
you try to make it as smooth as you can. As round as you can. Uh, you can see the shape on that body is very different from this one which I did later, which I think is a better shape. <coughs> This one feels more like a bird looks. Yeah. Again, the head's smaller on this one, which I prefer the body is to it. But, you know, people still like this one. That's that's my yeah. wife. She adores that one. But uh, when I said it, she said, can I have one? Do you make them for smaller hands, too? You can. I have done. Okay, so you work this along, and you can see with the flat, and by, by working with it in your hand and just moving your hand on the curve, you take out the flats, you take out the ridges, you work in different directions. I prefer to work with the grain, just like you all know why. Uh, you just work it all over. And I have that little vice, I can actually get both hands on this and work it like almost like a rasp. You all used a wood rasp, you work it like that. And you can take off a lot of wood very quickly. Like, I will frequently end up with a bigger walk on one side than the other. You all will probably do it better than me, but I typically end up with one side of the belly or the back portion too big. Yeah, this one, maybe it's just the way the grain looks, but it looks like it's little here than there, which is fine. They will be. Yeah. Yeah. They will be. So I work it with that, work it down, then I end up, I just use regular old sandpaper and I take it all the way down to 320 and I hold it in my hand and I'll also use these foam blocks, which I think I got from Clink Store. You can get them at Ace, you can get them at yeah. um, any place. Any, anywhere. Yeah. Lowest has them. And they are really, really good for working on yeah. a com complex curved surface or a compound or whatever yeah. however you say. They are really good for that. You just work it all over. And you can see just coming here, the mahogany is a little softer than a cherry or the mahogany is pretty easy to work with. And uh, so eventually that's going to come down. But you want to finish off, I take them down to 320. How to finish it, what sort of finish to put on it. If y'all done a lot of work where you have your own preferred finishes, but what I use is a sanding sealer. I use the Zinzer sanding sealer because it's a waxless shellac. I like that. Put on a coat, sand it 150, 220. Another coat, sand it 220, 3, 320. And then I go to polyurethane and do two coats of polyurethane sanding between the the third coat and the fourth coat. Of course, you leave the last one that way. You end up with, I use a satin finish, so it's kind of not super bright. Uh, I like the warm satin. And that's when you finish up with what we have here. Um, questions? Well, yeah, I, I need a little more help with that beginning step. Mm -hmm. Where you go from there, no, from, mm -hmm. no, you actually, t where you use the bandsaw. Oh, how okay. to, how to go from that to this. How to use the bandsaw? No, I use a scroll saw a lot, and I'm wondering if I can use that for this as well. Well, your scroll saw, you, you could, if your scroll saw will open, will it cut something this thick? Probably not. So I'm going to have to come in and use the bandsaw. But, okay, you guys are carvers and I'm not. Well, there's only, uh, there's only two of us here are carvers. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> because yeah. getting, knowing how to take this down okay, is an unknowable the, thing for Maybe me. the key thing to do is I cut the side profile first. Okay. okay. You cut this, you do this cut. That piece is going to fall off, right? And it, it's at an angle? No. Absolutely flat. Absolutely flat. Let me just, I'm, I'm not going to cut it, but we'll just take it over on, since you haven't worked with okay, it. Okay, I'm just cut it. I'm just saying, you lay here. And the beauty of a bandsaw is it cuts, if, the, if you line the blade up square, which again, 
advanced all class you learned how to do. Um, you cut this line, you cut that, and all those pieces fall off. Then I take blue painting tape, or whatever kind of tape you like, you like something that comes off easily. You take those, you, you put that piece back on, you put a piece of blue tape across here. You put, I don't even put this one back on, but I put that back on, it's critical. Tape it there. So this is all, you do the same thing on the other side. It's all taped back together and it looks just like this, right? Then you set it on this edge and you make sure you don't put tape across this and you cut that shape. So you end up with a blocky but three-dimensional figure like we, we have. Okay, so you start it on this side. this side and you cut it around like this. And that takes off that big chunk. All of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah. same thing here. You end up with a little piece. But there are people who don't, who wouldn't do it quite late. They might cut this first and tape it back together. It's yeah. it'll work that way too. Okay. It'll work. And by taping it, you get a square again. Yeah. Another technique that some people use is they'll cut up to here and they'll cut up to here, they'll back the blade out and they'll do the same thing out here, they'll cut to there and they'll back the blade out, they'll cut to here, down here and cut black it out. And so it's, and then they'll, they still have everything in one piece and then they'll do this cut. Anybody else do it like that? I would tape, but everything I've seen says tape it. I've yeah. never heard the other. Yeah, well, you'll tough. end up with a better, I do the tape, but I've seen people do it the other way and it works for them. Yeah, whatever works for yeah. them. Yeah. I, I'm not good enough to try that. Yeah. <laughs> and back in the blade out, you have to be gentle, and yeah. some people oh, yeah. can't be gentle. Right. I mean, you, we've seen rate. these things wrecked, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm here as what long is, as yeah. you want. What I was wondering, have you ever used like a zester, you know, for zesting crew? I know what you're talking about, but I have not, man. Yeah. I've seen the... I had one class here that a few years ago where the guy used that. A zester. And he was making birds, but he used a zester to go around. So that's what it's like you a rest. draw. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is for you? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, this is for you. You want one? Yeah, I've got one. You got one. Okay. How about yeah. you? You want one of these? Okay, this gives a little background on them if you, if you want. If you're going to put any, and then I did a, a um, in depth the whole process we went through. I documented it here. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll give you one of these okay. two, Margie. I'll give Margie her present first. Her name is Mark. Marge. Margie. 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 I apologize. Margie, <laughs> Margie. me too. Right, Don? You want one? Part G. I think I got one, but not. You don't have one. Oh, okay. Because I just wrote this uh, two days ago. Okay. <laughs> The, uh, and finally, for those that, are, that have an interest, here's the article. This was the second article published in uh, Woodcarver Illustrated. Uh, this was done either right after Frank died or about the time he died. Okay. So this was they they had done an original article in 2001, and then they published this in 2021. So. She writes a, a background on it, Kathleen Bryan does, mm -hmm. and then Frank, I guess it was just before he died, wrote this article okay. uh, on how he does it. Oh, and he uses a Dremel. So, he does. It's a Dremel, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. He uses a Dremel. Um, again, this, I just have one, you're welcome to read That's this okay. here. I just only have one copy of it, or... Find it online. Find yeah. it, this is online. Um, if you Google wood carving illustrated comfort birds, you'll find this article online. I printed this off from their online presence. I have a copy of that issue. I think we have one back here in our, our library. Uh, they have also published a book about comfort animals. It's a little, about 30 page little booklet. Uh, I have a copy of him. I should have brought him. I did not. Uh, there are comfort rabbits, there are comfort whales, there are comfort turtles. I've made about 10 of the turtles. If you go back there, you'll see there's guys carving turtles right now. Yeah, I'm carving a turtle. There we go. I'm, the turtles. Carving, I'm, I'm carving a rabbit. Comfort turtle. 
Yeah. And Rick's but I have to go slow because of my hand. So if you want to go back and look at what some people are doing with the turtles. Now the turtles, you can do some of the work on the sanders, but you cannot do the whole thing. Can you yeah. imagine a way to do it? You can't do the whole thing. Right? No. Now you could power carve it. That's using something like there are Dremels yeah, and then there are tools that are far better than yeah, Dremels. Okay. Yeah. They're power carving. But I don't think you can do a turtle entirely on this equipment. Yeah. I don't think you can do it. But uh, I do part of mine. And then you have to do it by hand. Because you carve the little uh, outlines of the scoops, scoop. the scales, yeah. and that I use a V tool. Is that what you use to carve the scoops? I haven't got to that yet, but okay. yeah. Do you guys uh, use rifles very much? When I find my Wheel. knives in the middle of moving, oh, you lost your they knives? got put down someplace, <laughs> and I have two bedrooms full of boxes. And it's, they're in there someplace. There you go. Yeah. We use similar tools, yeah. Okay, because I use the rifflers a lot in my school's hall work. Yeah. Because it requires that you have quite tiny spaces that you want to um, sort of sand out, but sandpaper doesn't work. <laughs> and exactly, the riffler is the right. The rifflers are wonderful. I had a couple of different sets one time, and then the other one's just a regular metal. I should probably get one, but no, I, I typically <coughs> just use a very fine. You guys know fine. they are? I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. No, the, I'm left-handed, and this thumb right here, bone on It's really apple. Yeah. 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 doesn't have that. doesn't have enough. Yeah, it's not thick enough. It's not thick enough. Yeah. Yeah, you have the eastern cedar that would be easy to work. It would. And it has some nice grain in it sometimes. Yeah. yeah. That would be a nice wood. Yeah. But hardwoods, definitely. So oak, do you use oak on it? Not yet. It I think white oak, I think, would be particularly good, but because um, its grain is a little. It's better for carving, I know, because it holds together better. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's tough to carve because it is a, just a very tough wood. You need, really need right. to use a, a chisel. Yeah, yeah. it brought down a bunch of yellow birch, but it's all one inch. If I could get somebody to cut the, the birch shape out for me, I could do all of the finishing. <laughs> well, I can cut, I'll cut the shapes out for you if you want. You give me the. Because I have spent lots of time on these and that and that, um, just doing finish sanding and things like the tools that go in the